Continue. Okay. So all of it goes into this huge orange envelope, and here's where it gets good. Yeah. I mail them out, and the very next day, you haven't gotten it yet. Yeah. I'm going to email John. Watch your mailbox for a big orange envelope for me. It should be coming early this week. Enjoy. Total tease. Yep. Now, some people already respond, ooh, can't wait, can't, because some of these people are people I know, they just never brought me in yet. Okay, actually, I've had at least a conversation maybe with some of them. All right, so, now I got the tease. Yep. Then we do the tracking number so we see when you get it. Once you've received it, I email you, did you get your big orange envelope? That's the subject line. Subject lines are important. <laughs> so now, I've mailed, I said, watch your mailbox for big orange envelope, and now, did you get your big orange envelope? And when your mail showed up that day, <laughs> It's an eight and a half by 11 inch orange envelope. Oh, by the way, it's got a lump in it. Yeah. Right? Lumpy envelopes. Lumpy envelopes are good. Old school, good, new school. Old school, new school. So now, if you don't respond to that, I wait a few days, I email you again, do you remember getting a big orange envelope? <laughs> the first, of the, well, actually the, no, I'm sorry, when you get it, it's, did you get your big orange envelope? That's right. Inside it says, the first step to getting more sales is getting noticed. That's yeah. why I sent your big orange envelope. Uh, now that I have your attention, would it make sense to have me come and train your sales team? Mm -hmm. So I'm saying, you have to get noticed. Would it make sense to have me come and train your sales team? I have your attention. Okay, if you don't respond to that, we email you a few days later. Do you remember getting a big orange envelope? And then it says the first of the four steps to more sales is getting noticed. I throw a testimonial quote in there from somebody, like one of these great ones, and a call to action again. Would it make sense to have me come and train? Now, if you still don't respond to that, I want to go one more shot. <laughs> now I'm selling sales training, right? Yeah. So one of the biggest things that we find is that people don't do follow up. Yep. So my or they, yeah, they they just stop. They stop too early. They stop too early. They so stop too early. my fourth email, right? So you got the tease. You're gonna get it. You got the did you get it? You got the you remember you getting it. The fourth email, a few days after the third one is. Subject line, how persistent is your sales team? <laughs> right? Um, practice what you preach. So how persistent. And inside it says, we've been secret shopping companies just like yours, and most give up after one or two attempts. Yeah. So now what are you thinking? Did you shop me? Right? That's what you're thinking. And then it's then I have a testimony from someone who's brought me in twice, and it specifically says, you know, he's brought me in, I, I brought Alan in twice, here you go. Because he's persistent. Right. So that's that's the combination of them. I get responses on the first, second, third, and fourth emails. So the, hmm. I, the idea is you come up with the message, what are you selling? Yep. Speaking, training, whatever it is that you're selling, right? Come up with that. Come up with a gizmo. My gizmos, I have a benchmark. Mm -hmm. If you lend it to someone, you're gonna go, you can borrow it, just give it back. Yeah, you want it back. Right it back. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I also have a theme, these tech blades say connected to your success on them. Mm -hmm. So because they're connections, right? Uh -huh. I have battery backups for phones yeah. and they say powering your success. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have the batteries. cell phone stands supporting your success. <laughs> and then my newest one, you know how people are paranoid about their webcams now? Oh you know, yeah, yeah. The privacy, the web, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got this little thing that goes over your webcam. Yep. It's got a little window. Yeah, yeah, slider. And it says, "Securing your success." <laughs> but here's the thing: it, it, I almost didn't do them because I was like, "Oh, you know, people, whatever." Anybody who puts that on their laptop, every time they open their laptop, they're looking at yours. me. And every time they open their webcam, they're looking at me. That's right. So I made them black so they wouldn't be obnoxious. My color is orange, so it's got my logo on one side, securing your success on the other, www.allenberg.com. So I'm going to do a mailing on that one. My thought on that one is going to be, I couldn't find the box I wanted. I wanted a box in the shape of a stop sign. Mm -hmm. I'm going to end up printing a stop sign on it, but I want it to say on the outside, what makes your customers stop and take notice? Oh. And then when you open it up, it'll have some message on the inside of the box, and it'll have that webcam cover in there. Talking about how are you securing your yeah. success or something like that, and I'll tie that in there. Um, I also do it with books. Yeah. You're, you're an author, I'm an author. Yep. So I have my fourth book out now. I took some people. I mailed out a new book, and I said, I don't know if you got a chance to get my new book yet. The subject line, when I mailed it, remember, not until they get it. I mailed it, when I first mailed it, I sent them an email, and it said, um, have you read any helpful books lately? <laughs> and then inside it said, watch your mailbox for a box for me. Yeah. Right? Mailbox comes, email. Um, summer reading was the subject line. Oh, I said, timely. You know, I said, people like to read books over the summer. I wanted to make sure you had my new copy of my new book. Um, if you have any questions about it, or 
And I was in that particular case, I was telling people about an event I was doing within a, maybe a hundred miles of where they are, so they, so could, they could show up. So, so yeah, Alan, so Alan, you're here, of course, here at National Speakers Association. Yeah. They give you this opportunity, right? This is like the bonus, bonus version. This is when you don't have a clock running on you. So, yeah. so of course, they had two minutes, and I mean, it is really two minutes. So talk about what happened today, like the little bit of the practice, and of course, what actually ended up happening on stage. Oh. Yeah, so on stage was great. So the practice, <laughs> the practice was this. For when they accepted it, they told me two minutes. I had to write a script and do a transcript for them. Yeah. Don't usually do that, but I had to do that. So by the way, the transcript is not exactly what I said on stage because I gave that to them like a month Learned ago. To go. <laughs> you know, what's really cool though is that they gave it to us immediately in the app. But immediately. anyway, very cool. Yeah. And I gave Smart. my postcard. I gave JPEGs of the postcard front and back. Oh. I gave the email scripts, the complete email scripts, because I didn't have time to talk about that. Yeah, yeah. So what I did is I put a, a reminder in my calendar every morning at 9 o'clock leading up to the conference. Wow. And it said, practice NSA script. Wow. I took my phone out. I took a two-minute timer, counted down from two minutes, and I did it. Whatever I was doing, I stopped, did my two minutes. Practice, that was practice, it. practice, practice. Uh, walking through an airport, I'm running it through my head. In the hotel room in the morning, running it through again. Um, it needs to be like a muscle memory because two minutes is way harder than 45 minutes. It is, I tell people that all the time, man. Like those short talks, you really, you we spend more time on them than we do on the last ones. Absolutely. Because you have to be precise. First time I did a 10 minute talk, uh, I speak in the wedding industry, so they called them wed talks. Okay. <laughs> I didn't see that one. Yeah. I haven't so, seen those. So yet. I did wed talks at this conference yeah. and 10 minutes, you know, 10 minutes of the practice and what to do it. And I coached other people on what to do. I said, listen, in normal speech you might try to bring the audience up with you and you're going and then you go in and you bring the audience down I said you go to hundred percent for ten minutes go and then drop them now first funny thing is it was the first time that conference had ten minute talks yeah. I'm in front of 600 people yeah. I go up on stage I do my ten minutes walk off the stage right some people are sitting in the audience didn't realize these were ten minute segments they've never seen me do a ten minute segment and they're sitting there looking at their neighbor going where Where's the rest of the content? Where, where did Alan go? Where did Alan go? Where did he go? Did, <laughs> did he, he cut out? Did he <laughs> did like, get cheated? <laughs> that's it. But it was 10 minutes. Was, and I said one thought. So here, they, they love my idea because of the combination direct mail email. They gave yeah. me the option of using the props or not. I chose to use the props. Smart. So I did the two minutes with and without the props. So just in case I forgot Something it. Or, or at last minute they said, no, don't use props on stage. Yep. Whatever. That happens. Um, but I, I would run it through. I'd run it through. Uh, and I added a line as soon as, as, as recently as last night, I added content to it. Because uh, it, it's not right until it's right. So the content I added was before I said, how persistent is your sales team? I prefaced it by saying, remember, I, it's almost like breaking the fourth wall. I said to the audience, remember, I'm selling sales training. <laughs> it was funny. It was, it was great. It was funny, but the clock's counting down from two minutes and it's not stopping because you're laughing. That's right. And, and I got a good laugh. I didn't get like a little laugh. I, yeah. got, I got a. That was good. I was expecting ha ha chuckle through the audience. I got a really good laugh, and the clock's still going down. I was like, but I, what I had done is I left myself time. I didn't do my talk that it was always two minutes. I did my talk. It could have been a minute and fifty. It could have been yep. a minute fifty-five. So I had the time for that laugh. I talked a little earlier. I would normally talk over a laugh like that. Yep. But I talked you know, over the laugh because I know I finished at one. <laughs> it was one and it was done. But but the, the, the key to it is practice is the key. It looks easy when you practice. That's right. And um, we were talking before about how I'm presenting in Spanish now. Oh my gosh. And I use an iPad again. I don't use an iPad in English. I use an iPad in Spanish because I need the notes. Oh, okay. Uh, my goal is to be able to go not have the notes. Yeah. And my second goal is to be able to go off script. Yeah. Because I can, conversational, I can do Spanish, but I can't do that in, um, you know, in, in, on stage. I'll, I'll be thinking. He's SSL too, by the way, Spanish second language. <laughs> <laughs> Half a Spanish second language. Oh my uh, and when I'm on stage, no one else is talking. That's right. I don't have to understand anybody. Yeah. You can present. You want to present in Mandarin once you get to that point. Oh, yeah. As long as you practice it, you can do it because no one else is talking. Yeah. You don't have to understand them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I found the better you speak, the faster they talk. Oh, yeah. Right? When yeah. they think you're a beginner, then they speak slowly. Yeah. And they're like, oh, this guy's pretty good. <laughs> and they, they put all the, the, the slang and the terms in there, and that's when you're like, what? I'm lost. So, we, we go to this Mexican restaurant near us, and this guy, Alex, he knows our order before we walk in. And he's a big guy, nice guy. He speaks so softly. <laughs> I have to.
have to ask him to repeat things, and he, think, he probably thinks I don't understand him. I just can't hear him. I just can't hear him. And, uh, but we'll talk in Spanish. Yeah, I will practice anytime I can. But it, uh, I wrote on the uh, CSP group on NSA uh, I, when I spoke in Cartagena, in Colombia. I wrote, when is a CSP a beginner? And I said, when you're presenting in a language that is not your main language, you've only been learning for five or six years, I said, I feel like a beginner Again. with the pre presentation skills of a CSP, but a beginner because you know I, mean, I have my notes and I'm doing things that I haven't had to do in English for a long time. But it's humbling because yep. you go back to the beginning and it makes, your, makes my English presentations better. Because you're going back and... and Going back to the basics is really like that's you know that's in in this industry this is actually what it gets back to. Yeah. We have so much fancy stuff, so much technology, and in the end, right? It's about a great story. It's about a great presentation. It's about engaging your audience and about teaching somebody that somebody wants to know. Right. And not everybody in the audience will relate to this, and that's okay. But there were four of us on stage doing our two minutes, and yeah. I, I was listening to the others because I hadn't heard them do their full two minutes oh, either. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you're like, and those are like, good. What that Fox idea? <laughs> and it's funny because Kara next to me, she's talking about doing workshops. That I already do that. Yeah. And I love what she said. She said, sell it, then you'll figure it out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm okay I, with that. I tell people in, uh, like in, the, in, in the wedding industry, and one guy was thinking about photo booth. I said, get the promotional material from the manufacturer. Okay? Yeah. Create a page on your website. That's right. Put a price sheet together mm -hmm. and sell it. So. Wedding, weddings are six months a year away. Yep. You'll have it paid for before you even get it. You could even get three gigs, yeah. Completely paid for. Just done. Done. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. just sell it before you do it. So I have speeches that I'll do. I'll submit to a conference that I've spoken at before and they want new content. So I'll have a conversation with them and I'll write a topic that's exactly to the bullet points that they want. So then they accept it, but I have six months to write it. So <laughs> as long as it's in your wheelhouse, yeah, you can do that. And it gives you a chance to research something new, which, which I can tell Alan loves to continually learn, right? Even Absolutely. though we're getting older, right? And uh, that that we're just getting better. So that's really the fun. I mean, that's what keeps it fun. You're not the guy who's going to do the same talk every time. You want to learn and craft it for that audience. Absolutely, that's, that's what I love to do too. It's all about the audience. You know, I, I think about singers that get on stage and sing the same song all the time. Oh, yeah. Um, and when I get on stage and I give a speech that I've given before, it's always new. Because yeah. these people are different people, yeah. even if they're friendly faces in the yeah. audience. And I just go off script. <laughs> well, exactly. Because exactly. That's, that's the point. But uh, the thing is, great. It, it, this audience needs this. Yes. Uh, I speak for Wedding Wire. Yes. And I speak at networking nights, and I have a, a talk that could be 10 minutes. Yeah. Could be a half an hour. Yep. There's no set time on it, and I just feed off the audience. If they are loving it, I go off. I'm going off script all over the place. Yeah. If they're like, "Where's my next drink?" which yeah. hasn't happened, but if they are, <laughs> um, I'm going to go faster. I'm going to go faster. I'm not going to add the extra stories. I'm not going to do all that stuff. Uh, and the other thing as a speaker is when the audience is so with you, you feel like the puppet master, rather right? like you have the strings, yep. and you have to respect that. You can't take advantage of that. You just respect that. I had a stage recently, 10, 15 seconds in, this audience was mine. They would just, anything, it's like, I want you to laugh, I can make you laugh right now. I want, I want, I want, to, I want to bring it down. I, I got this. But you respect that. You say thank you so much yeah, for no, giving yeah. me back this. Yes. And, uh, and it's a lot of fun. And then when you have an audience that's not giving you as much, like after lunch, you know, <laughs> yeah. two in the afternoon, afternoon. Yeah. two in the afternoon, you work harder, and you work harder, and you're like, no, I want to make sure you get value, and I want to make sure you get content, so you work harder to you know, make, not for you, but if you're not getting value yet, that's my fault. Yeah. So now let me give you value. So. Well, thanks, speaking of value, Alan, thanks so much for taking this time. So Alan's celebrating his, what, 10 plus a year membership. He's a, well, you're a member of the year for your chapter. New Jersey chapter member New of the Jersey, year. New Jersey, fantastic. Yeah. And of course, uh, one of the greatest speakers around. Thank, Thank you, you so much for hanging around and sharing some behind the scenes tip. Oh, if they want to contact you, it's, uh, isn't it Allenberg.com? Allenberg.com, A-L-A-N-B-E-R-G.com, nice and easy. So, all right, well, hopefully I'll get this guy for another cast on sales coming up soon. Absolutely. Thank you, guys.